Hey, praise the Lord, Brother Clinton here once again. Welcome back to my office and welcome back to the Word Prophet channel, a Christian ministry dedicated to the purpose of teaching the Word of God to the people in the churches of God so that we can go back to serving God in spirit and in truth as Jesus Christ commanded. Praise the Lord. This is square one. This is, this is the basic foundation for all of us who desire to serve the Lord Jesus Christ, is that we worship God in spirit and in truth, which means according to the power of His Spirit, which is in us if we are Christians, and truth, which means according to His Word. And if we speak English, the Word of God is given to us in the King James Bible. Praise the Lord. Um, I hope that the title of this video has brought you to it. and. Uh, if you're not familiar with this ministry, my name is Clinton, as I said in the beginning of this video, and I'm a Christian. I'm a minister of the Word of God. I am not here to entertain you. I don't have a, um, a, a, um, a 501c3 tax shelter status. I'm not registered with the beast system, nor will I ever be. I don't have a church for you to join. I belong to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, and I'm hoping that if you don't yet belong to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you will soon, and that's why I'm here. The reason that I'm here is that the Almighty God has called me to bring His Word to the people in the various churches in this world so that we can come out of the Babylonian system, stop believing in, and obeying the traditions of men that contradict the Word of God, and go back to serving God in spirit and in truth. That's simply why I'm here. You know, a very blessed brother just wrote to me a little while ago and he described to me something that I honestly had never heard of until a few minutes ago. And I know that there's a lot of heresy in the churches. I know that there's a lot of, you know, Hillsong churches and feel-good churches and people that just gather together in their churches. They don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, and they really don't care to. They just want to imagine that they do. And, you know, they, they worship, you know, some deity called that they call the Holy Ghost, but they don't know what its name is. And they call it Shekinah, which is the name of a devil, and they're calling down devils, they're summoning up devils when they think that they're worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ, and so on and so forth. Um, and this brother wrote to me and he told me about a phenomenon that I honestly had not heard of until this afternoon. And, and he told me that there are these young people that have these these meetings and they, they you know, one of them gets up and he does what they call preaching. And they don't say, they don't mention any of the scripture at all, but they just basically talk about all the sins that they have done uh, to, you know, to glorify the flesh and to draw other people in by talking about their sins. Uh, you know, the basic sins of that, that kids enjoy today, you know, drugs and fornication and alcohol and, you know, whatever, all that other stuff. And then they just say something like, if you want to receive Jesus, just hold up your skateboard or just give a thumbs up, you know, or just hold up your Frisbee. And all of a sudden, you're, you'll be a Christian. You're good to go. And I... This brother told me about this, and, and if I didn't know that he was a faithful brother in, in the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, I would have just kind of shirked that off and said, yeah, yeah, right, I don't really think that that could happen. But I know that he's a true brother, and I know that he was speaking the truth, because we are commanded to speak the truth in love. And for that reason, I, I wrote him back, and I said, brother, I, I have to say that I'm not surprised at that, but I have honestly never heard of that before, and it just keeps getting more and more bizarre, the things that the churches are doing out there today, and the things that people are doing who profess to be Christians and they have no idea what God's Word says, nor do they care to know. And that's kind of the basis for the message that I have for you in this video. Um, uh, you know, a long time ago, I was on a bus. I was a Christian at the time, and I was on a city bus in Phoenix, Arizona, and I sat down next to a woman who was dressed in men's clothing as a security guard. And I began to, to, you know, to witness to her about the Lord Jesus Christ, and she kind of cut me off and she said, Oh, you don't have to witness to me. I'm a Christian. And I said, you're a Christian? She said, yes, I'm a Christian. And I said, well, if you're a Christian, then why are you dressed like a man? And she began to, you know, come out with all kinds of excuses about how, you know, God looks upon our heart. He doesn't look upon the way we dress. And she had to do what she had to do, you know, to earn a living and to, 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 to feed her children and all that. And I explained to her with grace, you know, like I'm explaining to you right now, that with all due respect, you don't need to do that. If you would trust God and believe His Word, then He is the Creator of heaven and earth, and He formed you in the womb. <clears throat> he knows what you have need of before you ask Him, and He's well able to provide for you without you having to disobey His Word in order to get what you think you need. You know, the Scripture says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And all these things, of course, includes food and shelter and clothing. And she, 
I don't remember the conversation very well because it was a long time ago. I don't remember if she received it or not, but I remember that she, did, after I had gotten done explaining these things to her, she really had no argument. And um, not that I was trying to win an argument with her, I just was presenting to her the Word of God in the hope that it would convict her heart. I've had that same conversation with others many times before as well. You know, I was a taxi driver in Phoenix for a long time, and I've spoken to a lot of strippers and, you know, prostitutes who have told me that they have to do this because their children, you know, they have to support their children. They don't have a husband. Um, and they, you know, they were in the sin of fornication. They got themselves pregnant. Well, they didn't get themselves pregnant, but they wound up pregnant because of uh, their their actions, and then the, you know the men, the irresponsible men that they were with, wanted nothing to do with their children, so they just left, and and these women were left to take care of their children. But you know, many times I said to these women, you know, when I was witnessing to them, with all due respect, you don't have to sell your body in order to feed your children. You don't have to dance half naked or fully naked on a stage in front of perverted men in order to feed your children. You don't have to do that. There is a God in heaven. His name is Jesus Christ, who if you come to him, he will make a way for you to provide for your children in, in a way that you're not going to have to be denying him and disobeying his word to do it. And unfortunately, most of them didn't believe that. Hopefully, maybe that word penetrated their hearts, one or two, or, or many of them. Hopefully it did. Um, I never actually saw that happen at the time, but you know, maybe it did afterward. But here's the thing, and I've been talking for almost seven minutes already, and I, I need to get to the point, so here it is. There are a lot of people that are entering into what they call the medical profession today, the healthcare profession today. And there's another video on this channel that, is, that I did recently called something like, Why Healthcare Professionals Cannot Heal You. And it's, I think it's about a half hour, or maybe even an hour long, and I, I highly recommend that you watch it if you are studying to be a nurse or a doctor. Okay, if you want to know about that video, please leave a comment below and I'll be happy to leave you a, a link or send you a link to that video. In fact, maybe I'll put a link to it in the information box when I post this video. So having said that, that, that will explain all that I'm about to, to, to kind of summarize with you in, in short. Healthcare professionals today are not in the business of healing people. They're in the business of poisoning people to death. And they, they work for the, the insurance companies um, and the, the pharmaceutical companies. That's what medical care is today. Health, um, what do they call them, medical schools, are, are not learning institutions anymore where people learn how to, they, they, where they learn physiology and they learn how to heal the human body. That's not what medical school is anymore. Medical school is a tool of the pharmaceutical companies and the insurance industry in order to bleed people dry of all their money and then kill them in hospitals. That's what medical school is for. And so if you're joining or if you've joined a medical school to become a doctor or a nurse, the first thing you need to know about that is that you're not, you've been deceived. Just like people in seminaries have been deceived, just like people in, 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 in you know, high schools have been deceived and, and higher learning institutions supposedly have been deceived, colleges and universities, they're not learning what they think they're learning. They're learning, they're being deceived. Their minds are being molded by evil men in order to complete the agenda of the wicked. That's what these higher learning institutions are for. Uh, and if you want to know more about that, you can ask me and I'll be happy to send you some videos that will explain that. I'm not going to explain that right now. I'm just going to digress for now and leave that as it is. Um, but if you are a woman and you are professing to be a Christian, okay, and I'm not, when I say professing to be a Christian, I'm not pointing my finger at you. I'm just speaking the plain honest truth. If you're a woman and you're professing to be a Christian and you are working as a nurse or studying or training to work as a nurse, this is not going to work. This is like oil and water. You cannot serve Jesus and Satan at the same time. And I'm going to tell you why I say that. It's a very simple matter. If you are a nurse, number one, you have been trained to, to obey the orders of doctors who are under the control of the pharmaceutical industry and the insurance industry in order to destroy people's lives, to medicate them to death, basically. That's, that's what you're there for. And I know that that's not why you entered into the field, but that's what you're being used for. Okay, Just as a military man enters into the military because he thinks he's defending his country, but he doesn't know that he's serving a foreign country, the District of Columbia, and that he's become an enemy to his own countrymen. Okay, he thinks he's serving his country. Well, if you're a nurse, you've been taught 
that you're entering into, into the medical field in order to help people and to heal people. That was a deception. Okay? Medicine, medication, pharmacology is witchcraft. This is something that you need to know. If you profess to be a Christian and you didn't know this, then it's something that you need to know. If you'll come with me to Galatians in the fifth chapter, and this is not you know, the, the fullness of what the Bible teaches about this, but it's just a very concrete, easy, uh, straightforward example. When you go to Galatians chapter 5, um, Paul, the apostle of Jesus Christ, was speaking about some things that he called the works of the flesh. And there are 17 of them that he mentioned here, and, and afterwards he said that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And one of the things in that list of 17 things that he, he, he described as works of the flesh is witchcraft in verse 20. Idolatry, witchcraft. Okay, idolatry is the first word and witchcraft is the second word. Okay, witchcraft is a word that is an, an English word that in this particular case means pharmacology. And the way that we can know that is because the, the Greek word that it was translated from is pharmakia. Right? Now, I'm not going to get into you know, Greek and Hebrew and all that stuff and try to twist things around, but in this particular case, it's very important for us to understand that something that most people today don't understand, but in the days of our great-grandparents, people did commonly understand. A person that does the work of that which we call a pharmacist today was, up until uh, maybe a century or two ago, they were commonly known as a witch doctor. Okay. A person who takes chemicals and pieces of animals and, and you know, the, the, uh, the DNA and, and blood from different animals and combines it together to make potions that people should ingest into their bodies in order to cure diseases, this person is called a witch doctor. He has always been called a witch doctor from the foundation of the world until just recently, until a century or so ago when the devil introduced this Greek word into the English language. And when I say Greek word, I'm talking about pharmacology. Pharmacology is a derivation of a Greek word. It is not an English word. And it was introduced into the English language in order to confuse people and to mask the fact that the man that we today call a pharmacist has been from the foundation of the world referred to as a witch doctor. And the Bible makes that perfectly clear. Pharmacology is witchcraft. It is a work of the flesh, the, the art of Curing diseases by the use of drugs is witchcraft. It has always been witchcraft. It is not something that God desires his people to partake in. And in fact, let's go back to Jeremiah real quick. And look in Jeremiah chapter 17 and see what God says about the arm of flesh. He says in verse 5, Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man and maketh flesh his arm. Remember Paul was talking about the works of the flesh? And one of those is witchcraft. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, that maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. For he shall be like the heath in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, and the salt land, and not inhabited. Now, I don't want to make this video real long. What I want to stress to you is that if you are dispensing medications to people, you are a practitioner of witchcraft. And if you're doing that, you're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. Okay, whether or not you profess to be a Christian is irrelevant. What is relevant is if you obey Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ said, why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Now, there's lots of things that many of you are going to use to, to, to bring up to argue about this. And I want to let you know I'm not going to have arguments about it. But at the same time, if you have an earnest question, I will be happy to address it. And you can address your question to me in the comments section below. Or you can write me an email. My email address is always right below in the information box. So if you are thinking about becoming a nurse, or if you've already become a nurse, and you desire to serve the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to have to make a decision which one you're going to cleave to, because you cannot serve God and man. No man can serve two masters. Another thing about the nursing profession is that, you know, in the old days when nurses and doctors actually helped to heal people, nurses were women and they dressed like women. Okay. Nowadays, a nurse can be a male or a female and they all dress in men's clothes, which presents a real problem because if you're a woman of God, you're not going to walk around dressed in men's clothes. And that which they call scrubs is, is clothes that were designed for a man. And for a woman to be wearing those is not only 
ungodly and this abomination to the Lord because of his cross-dressing. But it is also not very modest. And I don't, need, I don't think I need to go any further. When, when women are dressed in scrubs, it's not very modest and it doesn't cover their bodies as a woman who is properly dressed is covered. And a woman who is properly dressed is dressed in a skirt or a dress and one that that covers her modestly, one that covers her body, not, not one that uh, exposes every nook and cranny of her body to the world. And that is another reason why women are not to wear clothes that pertain to a man. So for, for many reasons, but basically for those two reasons. Number one, because nurses, medical nurses have to dispense medication, which is witchcraft, and those that do so will not inherit the kingdom of God because you're poisoning people when you do that. And also, um, women who are nurses today are not allowed to dress as women. They must dress the same as men. And that is also an abomination before the living God. So that which I've shared with you in this video is not my opinion. It is the Word of God. It's not up for debate, and I'm not going to debate with anybody about it. However, as I said, if you have earnest questions, I will be happy to address them and to show you from the Scripture why I've said the things that I've said. If you love the Lord Jesus Christ then keep his commandments. Okay? If you want to continue to say that you're a Christian and at the same time you're, you're going to say, well, i got to do what i got to do and God knows that I need to do what I have to do to feed my family. Uh, if you want to continue to say that, you know, I'm not going to argue with you. You can, you can take it up with God when you see him on the day of judgment. All right? I'm not your judge. I'm just telling you what the judge has said and what the judge is going to say. And so I give you these things in love. In the name of Jesus Christ, may these things be a blessing to those who love the Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen.